Right, it's time to welcome our second celebrity pair tonight, Tim Rice and Alice Beer. It'll be okay, it'll be fine. It just so won't. It so will. <laughs> right, here we have the lyricist Tim Rice and the TV presenter Alice Beer. Tim entered the world of music back in the early 1960s as lead singer for the Aardvarks. The group who might not have topped the charts, but did at least come high up in the dictionary. Soon after that, he met Andrew Lloyd Webber, starting a partnership that produced the hit shows Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, Jesus Christ Superstar, and Evita. He also worked on Disney films Aladdin and, of course, The Lion King. He's won numerous awards, including six Grammys and three Oscars. Though, as a great cricket fan, he's probably proudest of having recently been president of the MCC. Alice, meanwhile, is in no doubt uh, proudest of her twin daughters, Phoebe and Dora, born last year. Uh, she first appeared on TV on the consumer programme Watchdog, and she now co-hosts the Heaven and Earth show on Sunday mornings, in between what she describes as having fun with the babies that I love. And tonight Alice is here on behalf of the charity Break, while Tim's good cause is Cornwall Air Ambulance. And in fact, you spend a lot of time in Cornwall, don't you? I have a house down there, Chris, and uh, the Air Ambulance does an enormous service, because an awful lot of Cornwall is very hard to get to, except by air. And you'll be amazed how many people get into serious trouble down there both um, things like heart attacks for the locals or tourists getting trapped on beaches, broken legs, and sometimes a helicopter getting there can make all the difference between life yeah. and death. Alice Brake, why that particular charity? It's quite a small charitable organisation that I, I met uh, a few years ago and I went up to take part in some filming. They organise much, much needed holidays for adults and children with, special, um, with learning or physical um, disabilities. They're your bucket and spade holidays with specialist carers, and for every £1,000 I take home tonight, of Tim's money, <laughs> <laughs> um, I can send a child with a specialist carer on a, a proper holiday, a seaside holiday. Which is great. Uh, Which so is great. I want lots of thousands of pounds. Well, I'd like to give you as many as possible. Right, well, now, here we go. 15 questions, three brand new lifelines, and a possible £1 million pounds for their charities. Remember, they have to agree, so they're shaking hands, on their final answer and the use of any lifelines. Lots of luck, you guys. Tim and Alice, let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? So, back down at the very bottom, but uh, hopefully we can go climbing up. Question number one is for £100. Someone who talks a lot in a gossipy and tactless way is known as a what? Rowdy mouth. Noisy mouth. Loud mouth. Booming mouth. <laughs> I like booming mouth, personally, don't you? <laughs> Well, this is the question. <laughs> I was worried if we, if, we, if we got this one wrong, it would be very embarrassing. It would be awful. It would be quite embarrassing. But I think... think? I've been told to read the question and the answer several times and not just assume that you know the answer. That's very good, but it is only a one So I'll be a show. while. <laughs> I'll be over here. It's loud mouth, isn't it? It is loud mouth. Yeah. It's right, you have £100. <laughs> Tim, you can go now anytime you like. Don't. He's not going anywhere. <laughs> oh, no. We need him very badly. <laughs> no, no pressure. Question number two is for 200 quid. Which of these phrases means to go to bed? Turn round. Turn in. Turn over. Turn up. It's extraordinary, isn't it? I think we'd better give the turn in. I think it's turn in. I it know. is turn in. I wish I was going to bed right now. No, you're not yet. You have 200 pounds. <laughs> I'll race you up to at least £1,000. That's the first uh, major milestone. You have all your lifelines. Question number three is for 300 quid. Which of these is a name for a steely or brilliant light blue? Gas blue, oil blue, nuclear blue, electric blue. I'm so glad electric came up. Yes, I, <laughs> one of those questions you think, I haven't a clue what the no. choices could be. I was expecting azure and confusingly foreign words. Um, well, just we think it must again. be electric. Gas blue, really. lot, oil blue, nuclear blue. It's got to be electric blue. Of course it does, yes. The right answer. You have 300 quid. <laughs> Question number four is for 500. On which part of the body is a scrunchie usually worn? <laughs> I'll love it if I know this and you don't. Because it'll be the only Hair, thing. ears, feet, back. 
but I admit I haven't a clue. I want to listen to you working your way around this, because if you've well, ever worn a you know, scrunchie... Do you know? Yes, oh, do good. Know. Well, in that case... Has Tim well, ever worn a scrunchie? Well, I'd love to see him with a scrunchie Let's on. Let's pretend I'm here on my own. <laughs> OK. Where would I put my scrunchie? I don't know. <laughs> well, if it's a scrunchie, it presumably isn't on your feet, unless, you know, you're a one-legged citizen. Could be, for an um, Omniport. Yes, it could be. A unidexter, as Peter Cook would say. So I don't think it's feet. Back. Well, why wear a scrunchie on your back? Nobody would see it, or everybody would see it except you. Ears, hair, must be a hair. Yes, and you'd look lovely in it. Is <laughs> yeah. that right? It is. Are you I'm... sure? Oh, don't, oh, Tim. No, yes, I, yes, I am sure. Wouldn't it be awful if we were wrong? You're not. You've got £500. Oh. <laughs> That's terrible. I didn't know that. I think you used to hold your... I never did this, but I think it was to hold your hair in a little ponytail. Mm. Right. Was, was it scrunchy you put your hair in? Mm. Right, you have 500 quid. Last point, you're going with nothing at all. Mm. He said reassuringly. But you have all three lifelines intact. Question number five would guarantee you a thousand pounds. Which of these animals has horns? Salamander, shrew, springbok, squirrel. Well, I don't have um, springboks running around my garden, um, oh. but I'm. I've fairly... seen them in South Africa. Have you? Yes. And they've, they've got them, haven't they? I'm pretty sure they've got them. Salamanders, little little fish. things. <laughs> oh, fish! It's Ooh. a fish, isn't it? Shrew is a um, little sort of thing that, like a ferret or a... No, it's not a... Oh, ferret! Why are we saying this? We, we know it's spring We're just bog. making ourselves look <laughs> so <laughs> stupid. Squirrels have nuts. Squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a spring bog. They have horns. It's <laughs> the right answer. We have £1,000. <laughs> Right, you have a thousand pounds. Question number six is for two thousand. You have all your lifelines intact. Uh, you might as well play this. Have a look at it. Tell me what you want to do. Grimshaw is the surname uh, of which character in Coronation Street? From the look on your face, Tim, I suspect you're not a great Corrie watcher. See what comes up. Eileen, Rita, Emily, Janice. I'm... I know you're turning towards me now. I'm back in scrunchy territory. <laughs> you are in scrunchy. What did we say was the one subject that we didn't want to question on? <laughs> Soaps. Coronation. But the audience, if you don't know, the audience, they, they, they look brilliant. We've got to ask We've got audience, to ask haven't we? Please, please. Right, audience, on your keypads, please. Let's get Alice and Tim up to £2,000. Here comes your question. Grimshaw is the surname of which character in Coronation Street? Eileen, Rita, Emily or Janice, A, B, C or D, all vote now. Ninety-one percent. Well, well, we had to say Eileen. Yes. It's a nice true. name. Eileen. It's Eileen. Final answer. Eileen, final answer. Absolutely right. You got two thousand back. Thank you, audience. Thank you. Thank you very much. How are you feeling? Because you were absolutely trembling when you came on, weren't you? I still feel very sick. Ah. <laughs> okay. no, I'll be happy once we get to thirty-two. Okay. Then I don't care. Oh, good. OK, well, we'll hold you to that. You're only four away. Have a look. Question number seven. This is for £4,000. Which of these is a main port in Morocco? Tangier. Tanga. Tanagra. Tangshan. Um, it, I'm... It's Tangier, isn't it? It's Tangier, yes. yes. Let's not mess around. Let's not... Let's cut to the chase. Final answer. Tangier. Tangier. Absolutely right. You have £4,000. <laughs> is in uh, Tanzania. Right, £4,000 you have. Question number eight is for 8000 You still have those two lifelines. Alice says she wants to get a £32,000, and then she won't care. So have a look at this one. See what happens. Pancho Villa was a 20th century revolutionary in which country? Pancho Villa. 20th century revolutionary in which country? Russia, China, Mexico, Spain. <laughs> It's, it, 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 C or D, in yes. my mind, do you know? I, there's not too many Chinese called Pancho. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there, again, called... there again, it could have been a visitor. I mean, he could have been playing away. Mm -hmm. Aston Villa, you're thinking of. Uh, His brother. I think we can 
say it's not Russia or China, and I, I, I would, I mean, there wasn't really, I mean, there was a civil war in Spain in the, in the 20th but century, there but there wasn't a revolution, so it must be Mexico. That's a bit risky. Are you going pancho poncho? Well, Are it's you just slipping it... down that. <laughs> it, it's got to be, but I'm not 100. percent There hasn't been a 20th century revolution, has there? In Spain? Not in Spain, no. I mean, he might have been a very unsuccessful revolutionary, and yeah. his revolution never really caught on. Only in his back room, <laughs> or a very quiet revolution. I mean, we can we can seriously discount Russia, can't we? Because yeah, that was and Lenin China. and you know yeah, all, all and the Trotsky and that lot. Uh, Pancho was not number three to them, was he? <laughs> what did I remember? China was Mao and... Oh, look, we're being silly. We know it's Mexico. Do you think so? Okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. Um, this is embarrassing. We should know. It is embarrassing, but, you know, there's no point in us saying, of course, it's Mexico, and then just going home with £1,000, that sends half a child on holiday, and that's no good to me. Correct. We've already asked the audience. We can't use another life here. I'm not sure they would be, with great respect to a brilliant audience, I think they would be divided between Mexico and Spain. Mm. But you can't ask them twice anyway. Can we just... Tim, oh, if see. you want to say Mexico, then I'm happy, but I'm going to blame you all the way home. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of a Spanish revolution in the 20th century. There hasn't been one in my lifetime, which takes us back to about 1975. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Civil War, he can't have been floating around in the Spanish Civil Revolutionary War. Revolutionary. Before, what happened in Spain before the Civil War? Well, go on, Tim, I'm not here, you do okay. it. Okay, well, in that case, I don't want to we're know. gonna go for Mexico. La, 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 la. Are you happy, Alice? <laughs> la, la, happy? can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> You're not that horrid. We must be right. <laughs> it's the right answer. Oh. Thank for that. <laughs> oh. oh, yes, I am that horrid. Now, where are my pills? <laughs> Too late. They're at the back. Your pacemaker's just gone I think off. John and Snow yes. have taken them all. Um, right. You have £8,000. You have two lifelines. Mm -hmm. Question number nine is for £16,000. You would lose £7,000 here if you gave me a wrong answer, but you can double your money. Have a look. In which county is Windsor Castle? Buckinghamshire, Oxfordshire, Berkshire, Hertfordshire. Did we Windsor both do the same actions then yeah. or not? <laughs> well, <laughs> Were we in sync? Buckinghamshire? No. Oxford. Hertfordshire, I grew up in Hertfordshire. So did no. I. Oxfordshire, I used to live in Oxfordshire. Would you live you grew up oh, in Hertfordshire? Oh, lovely. Where? Where are you? It's only an hour show, you know. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's Hertfordshire. I was in Hatfield. Oh, oh sorry. Um, I used to go to guide it's... camp in Hatfield. Really? <laughs> I was in the Peewit Patrol. Um, it's definitely Berkshire. It is Final Berkshire. Answer. Not Buckinghamshire? No. Correct. Berkshire. It is correct. You've got £16,000. <laughs> See, Alice, this is that moment you said if you get to £32,000, you're a free spirit, you can walk away with your head held high. Uh, but if you did give me a wrong answer at this point, you'd be pelted through the streets of London with rotten fruit for the next <laughs> oh, so No pressure. Now, you have a 50 50, uh, you have a phone a friend. Mm -hmm. Question number 10 would guarantee £32,000 if you gave me the right answer. Have a look at it, tell me what you want to do. Ben Travers was best known for writing what type of plays? Tim, excitingly. Is mouthing something. What are you mouthing? Farce. Farce. Okay. See what comes up. Monologues, thrillers, farces, romances. Yeah. Gonna go straight for it, Chris. Yeah. Final absolutely. answer. Farces. It is the right answer. You have thirty three thousand pounds. <laughs> Question number 11 is for £64,000. You might as well play this. You cannot lose. You have at least 32 grand. Here it comes. Brian Warner 
is the original name of which rock star? Tim, I think, thinks he knows. Who do you think it is? Marilyn Manson. Have a look. Wow. Iggy Pop. Marilyn Manson. Billy Idol. Captain Sensible. I would have gone home then because I wouldn't know at all. But it could have been a question about things you wear in your hair. Yeah, so I'm very glad you're here. And are you hap very happy with Marilyn Well, Manson? yeah, I guess so. I don't want to think about it anymore. I'm, I'll go for that as a final answer. Absolutely right. You've got £64,000. <laughs> £64,000. Well done. Well done, Tim. That's a, about a tenth of a chopper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have said when I first met Tim, he just done a cover version of the Rolling Stones classic, Not Fade Away, mm -hmm. and the B-side was How Much Is That Doggy in the Window <laughs> Sung Backwards. <laughs> it's going to be the big Christmas hit of yes. 1972. How did it go? How was the doggy in the window thing? Window thee and doggy that is much our tail waggly thee with one thee. <laughs> window thee and doggy that is much our sail for doggy that hope do I. <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> please don't applaud him because he might sing the rest. Now, <laughs> if we get to a million, it might go to number one. If we get to a million, we yes. don't care. You have sixty-four thousand pounds. You still have those two crucial lifelines. Question number twelve is worth £125,000. You would lose £32,000 here if you gave me a wrong answer. Have a look. This is question number 12 of a possible 15. In January 2004, which NASA spacecraft photographed and took particles from Comet Wild 2? Starshine. Starlight. Stardust. Star Seeker. I don't dare look at you. But I thought I was there when they came up, and now they're too similar to me. What? Tell what's me your... what's going on in your mind. You, you tell me first. Well, what's going on in my mind is that don't you have a friend who knows about this sort of thing? <laughs> um, you said to me... There were so many spaceships zooming yeah. around in the early part of this year. 2000. Um, I mean, I thought when Starlight came up, I was convinced it was that over Starshine, but then when I saw Stardust... I think, I, I mean, if I were making a spacecraft to take pictures and particles from Comet, I would Seeker. call it Star Seeker. Exactly. You wouldn't use the word dust because that's too de depressing. Except comets are largely dust and they shine. Now, Tim, you said to me, if we get something on cricket or astronomy, I'm OK. This is not astronomy, this is science. <laughs> Pedantic. Well, actually, I should know this. I'm afraid I haven't a clue. I think we've got to phone somebody, and it's not Raymond Blanc, is it? <laughs> what about, um, seriously, your, your scientific chum? Do you think she'd have a clue? She lives in America, isn't she? She lives in America. Oh, there you are. She must be the one. She's... Oh. Uh, I don't know how... I know she's very good on the ground. I don't know how she is up there. I mean, Stardust is, is... I'm now drifting towards Stardust. Oh, are you? Oh, Lord. <laughs> but, I, but to be honest, I don't know. I'm just... We've got to call somebody. And quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, seriously, what about... What's her name? Eleanor. Do you think she'd know? Who I was at school with, who's designing for a very fast, sleek car company. I don't think any of my pals would have a clue. I'll happily call my friend. Let's, let's, let's go for your pal. Come on, Eleanor. What's she called? Eleanor Nabney. Eleanor. And where's she? She's in Boston. OK. I think we're ringing her in Boston. OK, we'll find her in Boston. And um, do you want me to tell her it's worth £125,000? Yeah. Hello? Eleanor? Yes, it's Eleanor. Hiya. Uh, it's Chris Tarrant here, the host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire back in England. Uh, we've got Alice here on a, char a charity special tonight. They're doing rather well. Great! I've got right. I've got Alice and Tim Rice. Um, in fact, they're doing very well. It does mean there's a certain amount of pressure for you, though, to give them the right answer. 
Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd be pleased. Um, well, it's worth £125,000 sterling. Goodness me. Yep. <laughs> so, are you ready for this? I'm ready. All right, I'm ready. Next voice you hear will be Alice's. She'll tell you the question. There are still four possible answers. One of these is worth £125,000. OK. OK. Oh, right, lots of luck. Thanks. Alice, good luck with that. Your time starts now. Hi. In January 2004, which NASA spacecraft photographed and took particles from Comet Wild 2? A. Starshine, B. Starlight, C. Stardust, or D. Star Seeker? January 2004, which NASA spacecraft photographed and took particles from Comet Wild 2? Starshine, Starlight, Stardust, Star Seeker. Running out of time. Um, I don't know, I'm afraid. Um, I would take a guess and probably say... No! Oh, great choice. <laughs> oh, don't. Oh, no. Oh, I feel slightly more sick now. Sorry. Don't be silly. Well, can I... we ring your brother now? <laughs> no. OK. We should do 50-50 and We've just, got to just, now, just for we? fun. Oh, okay. Lord. Right, computer take away two wrong answers. Leave Alice and Tim the right answer and one remaining wrong answer. Now, what do you do? You've got £64,000 at this moment. It's worth £125,000. so easy at home, isn't it? So we drop... £32,000. You're guaranteed £32,000. Can we ring our charities and ask them what they'd like us to do? <laughs> What's your inkling? I'm because the particles keep sending me to dust, but starlight, you know. Starlight seems rather a naff name to choose for a spaceship. I mean, you've upset a rather big nation if it's right. <laughs> but, yeah. It's. I mean. I mean. It's, it's a nice word, but it seems rather unoriginal. Well, look. What it comes down to is neither of us are sure. We're both going towards the same thing, but are we prepared to risk the money? I said I'd be happy with £32,000. I think my charity would be happy with us having got £32,000. So you think, take the punt. We might just get real big time. OK, well, OK. So we, we go for C. Um, I think we dust. should... Dust. Dust, okay. Come on, come on, Tim. We'll, dust. We'll take the gamble. <sighs> Final answer, Stardust. Just one. One hundred. So good. One hundred and twenty-five grand. Oh. Right. Have a look. That is fantastic. What the result? That was really brave. <laughs> no more guessing. Have a look. This is what you've done. At this oh, moment, you have that check for your two charities for one. £125,000. Oh, Fantastic. You. Great. you have no lifelines left. However, the next question is worth a quarter of a million. So, this is question number 13. Have a look at it. You might like it. Here it comes. Which herb takes its name from the Greek for joy of the mountain? Coriander, rosemary, oregano, chervil, Well, it's a stinker, okay. isn't it? I know what I think it is, but I'm, I'm not prepared to take the risk. So please, at this moment, just stop me. Well, I'm intrigued to know what you think it is. I mean... The coriander. Why? I mean, you just I know just... it. But I'm not even looking at Greek names here. I just kind of have got a... They, they, they don't the, look, the, even coriander to me doesn't look very Greek, does it? No, oregano, no. I mean, I, It doesn't, but I think that, I think it is up coriander, but there's no way, no way, Alice, that I would risk the money. If only we hadn't had that stardust question, we could have We've got up. lovely Raymond we got, Blanc. We've got Raymond Blanc. We've got people who spend all their day rolling around in herbs. <laughs> If, if I had a gun to my head and had to choose, I'd go for coriander. But so I, I, I haven't a clue, but I, I don't think we can risk it. I think it's bye-bye, taxi for Mr. Rice and Miss Beer. That 
That's so annoying, isn't it? Because clearly the last two questions would have been easy. <laughs> can we see the next two questions? No. Well, you can, if you give me this one right. <laughs> Fair. No, I, silly. Yeah, it is silly. Oregano for the flower, coriander, because I just think it is. And I think Joy of the Mountain, coriander is such a strong smelling herb and it's, but it's quite a fragile little herb. So what it would be doing halfway up a mountain, I don't know. Core, is that heart, do you think? Come on, Tim, I'm taking Tim you with me. Tim so wants to play. <laughs> oh, um, no, I can't, I can't, no, I can't. Either. Well, you can no, do if you no. want to, but I just think it's bananas. No, I think it would be um, insane. Final answer. Take Final answer. One. Alice, you have to agree on this. No. <laughs> the final answer is we're going home, Chris, and it's Okay, been give me a big hand. They go away <laughs> with a splendid 100. <laughs> take it. £125,000. Well played. Thank you. I will tell you. No, I will tell you, because otherwise it'll just, it'll just nag you. I'll look it up on the way home. It'll nag you. If you'd said to me coriander, if you'd just been that little bit braver, you would have lost. Oh, thank God oh, for that. Thank God for that. If you'd said rosemary, no. You'd have lost. Oh. 93,000 <laughs> pounds. If you said Cherville, you'd have lost. The right answer is oregano. Joy of the mountain. Give a big hand. 125,000 pounds. Bless you. What happened, Eric? You're really good. Well done. Well played. Give a big hand. 125,000 pounds. Tim and Alice go away, having raised a massive £125,000. Great result for their two charities. I feel discombobulated tonight. No, I've not swallowed a dictionary, but I do wish I'd digested an encyclopedia. There's classic millionaire is on at nine on challenge.